welcome to a guide to every deck in Modern. Today we're looking at Temeshi Bloom. Temeshi Bloom is a combo deck brewed by player Davius Minimus. If you want to follow his channel and see gameplay of the deck, it'll be in the description. Temeshi is a card which, among other things, has an activated ability that lets you bring back artifacts and enchantments from your graveyard by paying mana and returning a land to your hand. The basic combo works like this. You must have Temeshi and Lotus Bloom either in your graveyard or on the battlefield. You can sacrifice Bloom for 3 mana and spend one of it to activate Temeshi again, picking up a land and retrieving Bloom from the graveyard. You can get other colors from Bloom as long as you still have at least one white mana to activate Temeshi. The math works out that each untapped land equals 3 mana and each tapped land equals 2 mana. The most likely scenario to combo is on turn 4 with 4 lands, 3 tapped to cast Temeshi and 1 left untapped. Repeatedly activate Bloom and Temeshi, picking up all your lands. This will result in 9 mana, of which you need at least 8 at minimum to go off. From there, cast Cultivator Colossus, leaving 1 to 2 mana in your pool. Because you have no lands in play, it will immediately die, but will still trigger. Put the lands from your hand back into play along with any new ones you draw. Use the floating mana to repeat the Bloom plus Temeshi loop and generate even more mana. At this point, if you have enough mana, you can cast Finale of Devastation for X equals at least 10 and kill your opponent with combat damage. If you don't have enough mana for a finale, repeat the loop with another Cultivator Colossus, which you presumably drew from the first Colossus's trigger, or a tutor to find one. While it's possible to brick on finding a second Colossus or to use up all your finales before reaching 12 mana, it's very unlikely. That is to say, after starting the loop, while it's technically possible to reach a fail state, in practice you'll be fine. The deck is technically capable of winning on turn 3, but is much more likely to do so on turn 4 as you usually need 4 lands, and that's also how long it takes for Bloom to come off suspend. The most common setups for comboing are to Wargate for Bloom on turn 4, leaving a white mana untapped, and sacrificing Bloom to cast a Meshi. Or alternatively, suspending a Bloom on turn 1 or using Goblin Engineer on turns 2 or 3, then casting Temeshi on turn 4. The deck runs an abundance of creature tutors in Finale and Eladamri's Call, which primarily find Temeshi and Colossus, and Wargate, which can find any permanent, usually Lotus Bloom. All creature tutors can also find Lotus Bloom via Goblin Engineer. Other common tutor targets are needed answers to permanents, such as Skyclave Apparition. Teferi primarily protects the combo and answers problematic hate pieces. The multiple copies of Beseju and Odawara also answer post-board hate pieces. Outside of the core combo package, there are some card slots up for debate. The general consensus is that some kind of ramp is necessary, though what form that takes isn't conclusive. Some possible options are Arboreal Grazer, Birds of Paradise, Ragavan, Sakura Tribelder, and Search for Tomorrow. Different lists experiment with one or a mix of these options. You'd think that given Wargate's ability to find lands, the deck should hypothetically want various utility lands such as Cavern of Souls. In practice, they're actually a detriment to the deck's tight color requirements, particularly when it comes to casting Wargate or Eladamri's Call. A build I experimented with was including Temeshi and Amulet Titan. My reasoning was that the deck already plays Colossus, has bounce lands that trigger Temeshi, and there's another combo with Temeshi that involves Amulet of Vigor. Temeshi can also recur Urza Saga for one mana. In practice, it was just a worse version of both decks as each one was watered down by cutting cards to accommodate the other. The downside to Temeshi Bloom versus other combo decks is that it's slower and easily interacted with. The upside is that it's more resilient and able to rebuild after being disrupted. It's also just really fun. Sideboarding When sideboarding, the core combo package is pretty much untouchable. You might be able to trim on Lotus Blooms in fast matchups or against decks running Teferi, as well as one copy of Eladamri's Call or Finale, but that's it. Cards that can be cut are Teferi and a small amount of the various ramp or flex slot cards depending on the matchup. In general, you should sideboard very few cards. Emrakul, or another big threat, gets sided in a lot as a way to fight highly interactive decks like Blue White Control, but it also serves as a second win condition in case the combo gets stopped for whatever reason. The rest of the sideboard is a mix of general answers to various archetypes and protection. Creature versions of effects are at a premium since the deck has so many ways of tutoring for them. How to beat it to reiterate, the deck is technically capable of winning on turn 3, but is far more likely to win on turn 4. This means that any deck capable of winning faster than that can outrace Temeshi Bloom. The bigger problem is that Temeshi loses to literally everything, and has no backup plan. The combo involves a 3-toughness creature that can only be activated at sorcery speed, an artifact, the graveyard, searching your deck, and drawing extra cards. Here's a list of prominent cards that shut off the deck. Artifact disabling cards like Stony Silence and Karn turn off Lotus Bloom. Graveyard Hate, like Rest in Peace and Relic of Regenitus, Exile Bloom. Any creature removal kills Temeshi, like any of them. Surgical Extraction or Necromentia effects. 
anti-storm cards that prevent casting multiple spells, cards that blank searching, and finally, dress down after you cast Colossus and pick up all your lands is probably game over. Tips and tricks. While the combo itself is fairly straightforward, there are a ton of intricate lines that can edge out victories. You may have Temeshi and Bloom, but no payoff. If so, you can activate Temeshi Watts to draw a new card. Temeshi's draw ability only triggers once per turn. However, you can draw more cards in other ways. Play a second Temeshi and keep the new one. Use Teferi or Odawara to bounce Temeshi. Or pick up a Triome and cycle it. You must have at least one white mana to start the combo. Pay attention to how you tap and sequence your lands. You'll need blue mana for Temeshi and both blue and white mana for Wargate. When comboing, you should prioritize generating white mana first, then green, and then blue and red. When you cast Colossus for the first time, you'll usually be left with two mana. Again, keep them white and green for Temeshi's ability, Arboreal Grazer, and Eladamri's Call. Teferi's plus ability lets you cast Finale of Devastation and Wargate at instant speed. This can be useful to protect Temeshi from sorcery speed removal. The deck plays few if any artifacts other than Lotus Bloom, making Goblin Engineer's second ability largely irrelevant. Engineer is in the deck only as a tutorable creature that vins Bloom. If you cast a large finale, have few creatures on board, and need to attack through blockers, remember that Colossus has Trample and Birds Fly. Sometimes, you'll only be able to generate exactly 7 mana and thus cannot continue comboing after casting Colossus. This may still be fine as a way to draw a ton of cards and set it for next turn. It may be worth testing Crumbling Vestige as a way to get around this as well. If the game goes long, you may have to cast Colossus as a threat without comboing. Only do this if you have no other options. Tameshi's draw ability triggers from all players, which rarely comes up, but your Amulet Titan opponent can trigger it with their bounce lands. If the combo can be answered by something like Surgical Extraction or Endurance, you can protect it by having two Lotus Blooms and keeping one in play, or suspended. If you cast Bloom off Suspend, your opponent can potentially destroy it in your upkeep before you can go off. Remember that Temeshi can only be activated at sorcery speed. Your opponent can answer Temeshi or Bloom after you've already picked up all of your lands, putting you extremely far behind. If possible, cast a fairy first to protect the combo. Temeshi can bring back other things such as Soul Guide Lantern. This is usually too mana inefficient, but it's still worth remembering. There are also many cases where you'd like to draw a card with Temeshi, but can't since you have no legal targets. It may be worth playing a cheap artifact or enchantment just for that. It must be restated that Dress Down is the best card against this deck by a mile, and you need to keep it in mind. I hope you've enjoyed this look at Temeshi Bloom. I want to thank my fellow players in the Magic community for whom sharing their experiences helps make these guides possible. You can find additional resources, such as an up-to-date deck list, in the description. If you think I left out anything important or got something wrong, please leave your thoughts in the comments, and stay tuned to see what deck we look at next time.